Thank you all for uh, being here today for this uh, Green Open Access uh, uh, coffee lecture. Um, as you know, we have just 10 minutes, so I will uh, start right now. Uh, the idea today is to understand a bit more what Green Open Access is, uh, show you some tools and resources that can help you um, to make it work, and uh, as a bonus track at the end, learn something more about uh, what funders want um, from you about open access and more specifically uh, on Green Open Access. Um, I would like to start with a quick reminder, I guess that uh, you might already know um, how to make your um, uh, article open access, you have uh, two uh, main paths, the first one is the so called gold road and the other one is the green road. Uh, if you choose the gold road, it means that you uh, decide to publish um, your article in an open access journal or in a closed access journal um, that um, offer the option uh, of uh, open access at the article level. In both cases, you have to pay uh, a fee, an open access fees, the article processing charges, and uh, your article will be immediately and freely available on the journal website. In the second case, for the green open access road, it's a bit different because you're going to publish in a traditional subscription closed access journal but at the same time, you um, self-archive a copy of your scientific contribution in, a, in, a, in a either institutional or thematic repository. Uh, of course, green open access comes with uh, some conditions that are set by the publisher and defined in the publication contract. These conditions are mainly linked to the version you are allowed to upload in the repository and the embargo you have to set uh, to provide open access to your article. In this case, um, uh, no charges are paid by the author regarding open access, on the contrary of uh, the gold open access road. Um, I would like also to uh, remind you uh, or to um, make it uh, clearer uh, a few obscure terms linked to the different version of a paper. Um, as you probably already know, um, there is the submit version of the paper that's the other uh, final version or preprint that it's not peer reviewed. And then there are two peer reviewed versions of the paper. I will start from the last one that's the published version, also called the version of record, that it's the article you will find in the journal website. And then there is the let's say intermediate uh, peer reviewed version that the accepted version, AKA post print or AKA author accepted manuscript. And this is the peer review version of your article prior to copy editing and the production by the journal. Uh, why it's important is a specific version because it's usually the version that you're allowed to upload in the repository uh, according to the uh, publisher policies of the journal. Um, so you might ask yourself where I can find all this information about the condition to make uh, green open access uh, happen, uh, like the um, version you are allowed to upload or the repository or the embargo you have to set, of course, in the journal policy. Uh, sometimes these policies are not so easy to read and that's why I would like to show you this very useful tool that is called Sherpa Romeo. It's an online database where you can find a lot of information about uh, journal policies uh, on open access. Um, this is the home page of the of the database uh, where you can look for the um, journal you're interested in, either uh, searching for the title or ISSN, or even you can browse by publisher. Once you find the journal you're interested in, in this case, for example, Nature, um, you are redirect on this uh, page. In the first part of the page, you have uh, the more general information about the publication, and in the second part, um, we have a sort of a translation in a more understandable way of the condition you have to follow to uh, provide open access following the green road to your article. Um, as you can see here, you can check what the what the author is allowed to do for each version of the of the paper. So the published version, the accepted version and the submitted version. Um, Sherpa Romeo used these uh, small icons to uh, give you a more visual um, uh, translation of this information. And um, in this case, uh, I'm going to show you a bit uh, more in detail the accepted version. So you can uh, simply click on the uh, small plus on the right hand side of your screen and you are redirect here um, where you can find the, the, the information uh, um, related to the journal policy for open access. Uh, in this case, for the open access, uh, for the accepted version of the of the article, what you can do? Uh, first of all, you have to check if you have to set an embargo before providing open access to the publication. There is the small uh, um, egg timer that um, uh, indicates that what oh, sorry what you can do. In this case, there is no embargo for this journal. For example, it means that you can uh, upload uh, the accepted version of your article uh, right upon publication. Then there are some information related to the ownership of the copyright. Sometimes you can also have information about licenses. In this case, for example, the copyright stays to the publisher, but it can also happen that it's uh, 
um, the owner of the copyright can be the uh, author. And then there is this very important uh, part that is related to the location. Uh, what do we mean talking about location? Location is uh, the authorized repositories, because for a publisher, not all the repositories are allowed to upload the, the accepted version of the manuscript. In this case, we can see that for this journal, um, the policy is quite open because you can upload almost wherever you want uh, the accepted version of the journal. Then at the end, you have some additional information, some further condition that you have to follow to um, provide uh, open access, uh, uploading the, 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 the article in uh, repositories. Uh, in this case, for example, you have to acknowledge the um, publisher copyright. You have to uh, put a link to the published version uh, to have to, to, you have to add uh, um, a statement uh, um, related to all this information. Uh, but you can find also other information or condition to follow. So please carefully check also this last part when you um, verify what you're allowed to do uh, for each journal. Uh, once you understand the, the policy, of course, you have to uh, find a suitable place to upload your um, article. Uh, so of course, the repositories. There are different types of repositories. Um, there can be institutional repositories. For example, for EPFL, it's uh, InfoScience. And I'm not go going to talk about that today, not because it's not important. On the contrary, it's, uh, it's really crucial to understand a bit more uh, what you can do with InfoScience and how you can use it. But uh, that's, that's why we decided to um, dedicate um, uh, a coffee lecture specifically to InfoScience. So please save the date. Uh, next Thursday, there will be a, a coffee lecture on InfoScience. Then there are thematic repositories, uh, mainly preprint servers. You, I think you uh, might know PMC or Archive on by Archive. Just be careful because for some of them, like for example, ChemArchive, you are not allowed to uh, upload um, a peer-reviewed version of your article. Then there are the general purpose uh, repositories, like for example, Zenodo and Fixshare. And I would also like to mention this last, this last part. These are also academic networks. It's quite common that researchers uh, decide to upload uh, their articles in this um, in this website, it's, uh, it can be fine, but just be careful, they're not repositories and they're not compliant with, the, with funders open access policies. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is the bonus track, uh, what you um, are expected to do uh, by funders when you are funded in a, with, a, with a grant uh, in terms of open access. But first of all, you have to provide open access to your uh, publication, it's quite simple. How can you do that? You have uh, two different options, the, the option I mentioned at the beginning. So you can either follow the gold open access road or the green open access road. Both are fine and compliant for, um, for funders. Uh, just be careful because for the green open access, there are um, a few um, extra requirements that you have to follow. For example, for the Swiss National Science Foundation and for the European Commission in the framework of uh, Horizon 2020, um, following the green road is compliant, but we have to set the maximum embargo for your publication of six months. Um, for the new uh, framework program, uh, for the new European framework pro program, Euro Horizon Europe, uh, again, green open access is perfectly compliant, but there is no embargo admitted. So this is um, a bit tricky because sometimes publishers' policies do not allow you to uh, um, provide open access before 12 or for 24 months. Uh, I've not mentioned so far DPFL open access policy. Uh, of course, DPFL has an open access policy since 2019 um, that is perfectly in line with the main funders policy. Uh, the school supports uh, wide and open dissemination of all scientific outputs and requires also researchers to deposit their articles in the institutional repositories and uh, um, ask them to provide access to, uh, to the articles no later than six months after publication. Uh, as I said, sometimes it can be quite complicated because uh, publisher policies are not um, aligned with that. Uh, so that's why we provide you with a, a notary amendment and uh, an accompanying message that you can send to the publisher to negotiate this, uh, this embargo to reduce it uh, up to six months. So, uh, the same um, is uh, for uh, the SNSF. They also provide you with a, with a message that you can send to them to the publisher trying to negotiate a reduction of the embargo period. Um, the last thing I would like to say is that um, self-archiving uh, is, uh, is very important and it's very important to think about that from the beginning, even upon con contract reception, because it happens quite often that um, researchers uh, lost uh, on the way the um, uh, 
accepted version of the of the article and then it's quite hard to um, get it back again uh, and that's why i would like to um talk uh, about this um, interesting tool that is called direct to aam uh, powered by the open access button um, it's um, a set of easy guides for authors uh, to help them to obtain and retrieve the accepted version of their manuscript uh, from uh, directly from the journal sub submission system um, it's presented really like a very simple set of instruction uh, for each uh, for each publisher so please bear in mind that it can be really useful if you uh, cannot find your uh, accept uh, accept version anymore. Um, I think that's it. Here you can find the, the uh, tools I've mentioned, uh, the information about the help uh, the library provides for uh, info science, the uh, uh, link for uh, register for the next coffee lecture on info science, the policies, uh, our fast guides on uh, open access, and our contact for um, any question you, you might have. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank uh, my colleague and next colleagues for the help they gave me for um, preparing this uh, this presentation. And of course, uh, any question is more than welcome.